Download speeds drastically decrease when running at uh, 20 giga samples per second. Uh, 10 giga samples per second and down. I can typically run well over 300 megabits per second with a 1 gig Ethernet card. I change the software to copy from C2 down to Memory Bank 2 and then download from Memory Bank 2 to the PC. And you can see here when I throw the switch how much of an effect that will have. So we've gone from roughly 40 megabits per second to about 160 megabits per second. You can see it's taking me now roughly 5 milliseconds to download the data. Again copying it directly out of C2 takes about 24 milliseconds. The problem with using this technique is that it about doubles the acquisition time of the scope. We're now collecting 400,000 samples. And again we can see we're still running roughly 35-38 megabits per second. And now because we're transferring more data, it's roughly uh, 320 megabits per second that I can achieve by copying from the memory. So roughly again, 100 milliseconds for direct copy out of C2 and 9 milliseconds copying out of M2. Here we're copying 2 megabytes. You can see the data rate now is 500 megabits per second or roughly 31 milliseconds copying out of M2 and 40 megabits copying directly out of C2. See here as I bump this up, the scope is actually taking longer to collect the data than our one second now. So we have to increase our time here that we pull the data out of the scope. Basically I'm requesting the data faster than what the scope is able to collect it. So I increase this time out to two seconds and we can see now the data rate is back up to about 400 megabits per second with 4 mega data being downloaded. Still running at roughly 40 megabits per second copying directly out of C2. See here we're collecting 10 megabytes of data Again, roughly about 190 milliseconds to download, or 421 megabits per second. Copying out of N2. Copying out of C2. We achieve 40 megabits per second, or roughly 2 seconds to download. So I think the key with using this technique to pull the data out of the scope to achieve faster download rates is going to be figuring out how long the scope takes to actually acquire the data and what it is that you're trying to process on the PC. If the time that it takes to download the data and process it on the secondary PC is longer than what the oscilloscope takes to acquire the data, this should be a good technique to get the data off the PC. This is looking at the 8500 sampling 20 giga samples per second. This is 500 nanoseconds per division, or roughly 100,000 points. Here are 20 giga samples, 5 microseconds per division, or 1 mega sample. You can see now the update rate is roughly about a half a second. Here we are 20 giga samples, 100 microseconds per division, or roughly 20 million samples. The update right now is roughly 3.75 seconds. 
This is just the scope's acquisition speed. This has nothing to do with the Ethernet. These are the two solid state drives I bought to test. The transcend drive is a PETA interface. The crucial drive is a SATA interface. For the crucial, I just installed the PETA to SATA interface. That's actually what's in the system today. And down here is our Intel 1 gigabit Ethernet card. The crucial drive came with a license for a Chromos True Image. The software handles the alignment for you. So that software is actually fairly simple to set up and use. Again, I just uh, used that software to re-image this drive. It took me all of maybe uh, 15 minutes to get this thing set up and installed in the machine. Uh, no big deal. Um, works pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. Switching over to this drive basically allows the system with Windows XP and the latest of Extreme software to boot about as quick as what it did originally with Windows 2000 and uh, version 4 of Extreme.